Hello, this is Edith Neumeyer, and I'm the author of the book, The Mystery of Adam. Today I want to talk about Daniel's 70 weeks again today, because I think people are still confused and about that topic. Of course, there's still lots of people believe that there is a gap after the um, 69th week of Daniel. But, of course, that is not true. It's false interpretation and people are just totally assuming things. Now, I want to look at it. Now, people just go kind of to this verses in Daniel 7, uh, Daniel 9, sorry, Daniel 9, um, 20, 26 and 27. And then they're just assuming that there's all of a sudden a time span of 2,000 years in between. Who in the world came up with that kind of a plan? It had to be somebody who wanted to deceive the believers greatly and build their own little end times theology on it. The thing is that Daniel's 70th week has been used to greatly deceive um, the, the, the saints, okay? Because so many other things have been built on this Daniel 70 weeks um, that are false. For instance, the, the big thing that why people had to come, or why Satan had to come up with this seven, or with this gap is because he wanted people to believe that the Jews have still some time at the end, some time at the end, um, to come to um, Messiah or to return to God. And that is false. The Jews have right now to accept Messiah, not 2,000 years later. The thing is, what happened to those Jews for the past 2,000 years? They all will end up in the lake of fire. Why? Because nobody was reaching the Jews. That's why. Because we left them to their false teachers and they all were misled. Okay? Only a few Jews in, in every century uh, uh, became believers in Messiah. And that is pretty sad. And so people, um, or Satan, wants people to believe that, oh, sometime at the end, the Jews will have time to um, repent. That is false. Okay? That is false. The reason why this um, whole gospel preaching went to the uh, into the hands of the Gentiles is because the Jews rejected it. But let's start from the beginning, okay? Let's start with history, Jewish Hebrew history, okay? Because that is important to understand this whole thing. Because see, we have been all confused and deceived, to believe things that don't exist. Okay? Here is what happened. See, I don't believe in dispensationalism, as you know. Okay? But I believe there are clear periods of time during which God dealt with groups of people. Okay? God dealt 2,000 years. He dealt with the Hebrews. For 2,000 years until he finally said enough is enough and then the gospel or the preaching of the gospel went to the Gentiles see it is not about the people never ever it is always about Messiah from the beginning everything the Old and the New Testament was about Messiah never about a people group 
Okay, it was never about the Hebrews or about the Jews or the Gentiles or pre-Hebrew or whatever. It was always about um, Messiah. We send people. We send in the in the um, in the garden. We all did. Okay, um, our original parents, Adam and Eve, they sinned, and that sin came upon us as well so we sinned already in the garden we rebelled against god in the garden and because we rebelled we lost the right to rule this earth god told adam and eve or the man and the woman rule over this earth okay that was the mandate to both of them to rule over the earth to subdue the earth and when they rebelled against God, that right went to Satan. But God didn't just leave it at that because we were disconnected from him. So what did he do? He told them from the beginning that a seed of the woman will crush the head of the serpent. And he will be our redeemer. He will take the sins away from us. So we are not under sin anymore. And that was the message that went through the whole Bible. All believers believe that, starting with Adam, all the patriarchs, all the way up to um, Noah. They believe that. Most people didn't care. But the patriarchs, Enoch, Methuselah, um, all these um, big men, believers of God, they knew about Messiah. And they taught the next generation about Messiah coming. And then Moses, I mean, not Moses, but Noah taught his sons and the sons after him, which then ended up with Abraham. Abraham again received this message from Seth. Or Shem, sorry, from Shem, the son of Noah. So they all believed the same thing. They believed Messiah is coming. And Abraham looked for that time. He was looking for this Jerusalem. See, Shem lived in Jerusalem, the Salem of Abraham's time. That was Jerusalem. But Abraham did not look for uh, Salem or Jerusalem. He looked for the heavenly Jerusalem. And he trusted and believed in God and he believed that God would bring forth such a Messiah, a Redeemer. And God promised him that, that this Messiah would come through his lineage. It was all about Messiah. Okay. So we have this time before Abraham. That's 2000 years. Then with Abraham, a new time started because now the gospel, the proclaiming of this message that Messiah is coming went to the Hebrews and the Hebrews were supposed to be doing that. They were supposed to be telling the world Messiah is coming. The Redeemer is coming. But guess what? They did not do it. They were rebellious as well. Look at the sons of Israel or Jacob. Most of them rebelled. They even sold their brother Joseph into slavery or killed them. They were very bad boys. Okay, if you read and the, the prophecies of Jacob for his sons, they're not very happy, okay? The first three sons didn't lost their um, inheritance because of how bad they were, okay? Read it. The inheritance of Messiah, that's the inheritance, okay? That Messiah would come through one of those tribes, went to Judah, the, the fourth born of Jacob, 
okay? Not the first three, the fourth born. That promise went to um, Judah. So Judah became the lineage of Messiah. And the promise that God gave to whom? To Abraham, okay? Abraham was promised a Messiah, a seed. He was promised that all of the world, all the nations will be blessed through that seed, okay? He is the one that would redeem us all, and Abraham was giving that. He was also given the promise that this seed will be king on this earth, king, not his descendants, not his, not Judah, not all of Judah. No, the Messiah will be king. Out of David will come the king, but not all of the children of David, only one, and that was Messiah. And people just do not understand that. That is basic understanding that we need to understand. I have argued with some people who just don't see that, um, that, that fact that God always promised Messiah. And that was the covenant. I mean, if there was a covenant, it was always nothing but about this Messiah and bringing forth the Messiah. Okay. The covenant was uh, with um, the Hebrews at Mount Sinai, they were supposed to be the light to the world, or not the light, they were supposed to be speaking of the light of the world, pointing to the light of the world, and they didn't do it. They did not do it, okay? The promise was to Abraham that the Messiah would come, and that he would rule the whole world, that he will uh, claim his kingdom, not the promised land only, but the whole world, the whole world, okay? So then, this proclaiming of the gospel went to the Hebrews and they failed. People, they failed. How do I know? Because they committed idolatry. Matter of fact, God wanted to uh, destroy him right after they left Egypt because they were um, committing idolatry when he when Moses was up in the mountain and Moses could actually convince God not to do it but you know what it didn't take very long before they kept going back to idolatry and then so finally they even split the kingdom they were not even united any anymore and Israel, the kingdom of Israel, left. Ten tribes left Judah. Why? Because the yoke of their kings were too heavy on the rest of the tribes, and they didn't. They refused to take it. So they split. But nevertheless, they started committing idolatry right away. Their kings were idolaters. They let, let them into idolatry. So um, they went into captivity. Jesus, I mean, um, God gave them a divorce paper and sent them away. Literally sent them away. Now, before I say that God divorced them, it is important to know what Moses teaches about divorce. When you're divorced from your wife, you cannot remarry, especially when she already had another man, when she slept with another man. You cannot remarry her, okay? It's impossible. It's an abomination to God. Why? Because she uncovered the nakedness, okay? So... That man cannot remarry his wife ever again. That's what Israel, the kingdom of Israel did. They committed idolatry. And so God gave them a divorce paper. Uh, let me see.
because I know let's start with uh, Jeremiah 3 8 no 3 6 I'm gonna start with um, 3 6 this is what Jeremiah wrote have you seen what faithless Israel has done she has gone up on every high hill and under every spreading tree and has committed adultery there. I thought that after she had done all these, she would return to me, but she did not. And her unfaithful sister Judah saw it. I gave faithless Israel her certificate of divorce and sent her away because of all her adulteries. But yet, I saw that her unfaithful sister Judah had no fear. She also went out and committed adultery. Okay, you can commit. You can um, continue to read. She defiled the land and committed adultery with stone and wood. In spite of all this, her unfaithful sister Judah did not return to me with all her heart, but only. Um, well, anyways, didn't return her heart. Okay, so you see here that God gave Israel divorce paper. And what did Judah do? And sent her away. She went into captivity, never returning people never returning i don't care if somebody says oh i think we found in india someplace we found some remnants it doesn't matter he sent them away he divorced them they can't come back she cannot come back i hope somebody understands that so now people say well but that was only done to um israel not to judah judah was not um sent away um, and she did not get a divorce paper well let's go to isaiah and see what isaiah says let's go to isaiah 50 okay now isaiah and jeremiah were both prophets to judah okay they were both prophets to judah so make no mistake so he's talking about judah here it says specifically talks about Judah, not Israel. And he's talking up to Judah right there. And he says, where is your mother's certificate of divorce with which I sent her away? Who is saying that? It's God. It's not Isaiah saying it. He is prophesying. God is saying this. Where is your mother's certificate of divorce with whom I have sent her away? Or to which of my creditors did I sell her or did I sell you? Okay, you understand? These children of idolaters or of, of, of divorced women could be sold. So here's, and to which of my creditors did I sell you? Because of your sins you were sold. Because of your transgressions, your mother was sent away. When I came... When I came, why was there no one? When I called, why was there no one to answer? Was my arm too short to deliver you? Do I lack the strength to rescue you? And you can continue to read. But it is obvious God also gave Judah a divorce certificate and sent her away. Where did she go? She went to Babylonian captivity. Okay? People should know that. It's basic Bible history. He sent her away to Babylonian captivity. So now they are in Babylonian captivity. And that is where Daniel comes in. Okay? Daniel comes in. Now both of them, Judah and Israel, were divorced why because of idolatry the covenant that they made on mount sinai were null and void i could add here 
let's see where is that in um i think deuteronomy the last things that moses told the israelites i believe it's deuteronomy 32 30 or 32 okay last things that moses told the israelites before they entered the holy land he said if you do not keep the commandments of God, he will kick you out of the land. There is always um, a, a, a responsibility attached to a covenant. Both parties need to fulfill the uh, conditions of a covenant. If these conditions are not fulfilled, just like a marriage covenant, see, some people don't understand. They say, well, you don't know what a covenant is. Yes, I knew what a covenant is. A marriage covenant, because that's what God is using, a covenant of marriage. Okay, that's why he gave them a divorce degree, paper, because that's how he, what he considered. He considered it a divorce, I mean, a, a, a marriage covenant. And they broke that marriage covenant because both have to fulfill the contract and the, uh, uh, the, the conditions of the contract. And the condition of the contract for the Israelites were to, to uh, follow the commandments and definitely not commit adultery or idolatry. That was, that was bottom line, okay? And when they did that, they broke the contract, not God. God didn't break any contract. And because they um, broke the contract, he gave them a divorce paper and sent them away. Okay, so now they're in captivity. And this is where Daniel comes in. Daniel is realizing that they had sinned against God and he was screaming to God, for forgiveness okay and God remembered the covenant or the promise he made to Abraham what was the promise to Abraham see he's not remembering now the covenant that he made with the Israelites on Mount Sinai because that was broken okay but Abraham did not break the promise there was still this covenant that he made with Abraham. And that covenant, covenant was, or covenant or promise, okay, was that Messiah would come from Abraham, one of his descendants. That was the promise that God made to Abraham. And he remembered that. So now what did he do? Well, very simple. He allowed Judah to return to the land, but they didn't own it. They never owned that land again. Yes, they fought many times, many, many, many times to regain control, but they never gained control ever again. Why? Simply because God took away the land from them. He is bringing them back right now to fulfill only one more thing. And that is to bring forth Messiah like it was prophesied. Okay? By the prophets. By Moses. By Abraham. By all the believers that believed Messiah will come. So he brought back only Judah because out of Judah, Messiah would come. Benjamin was just a part of Judah, okay? Uh, for some reason, but Benjamin, you know, is not very important. They are called Jews, whether they are Benjaminites or not, they're called Jews because they are just a little at addition you know to to judah so judah had to come back to bring forth messiah that was the only reason people he didn't bring them back because he forgave them or whatever no he brought them back to bring forth messiah and you know what 
Only a remnant, only a remnant accepted Messiah anyways. During the Babylonian captivity, this new religion spread very widely called Judaism, okay? And it's called the oral, uh, uh, the oral um, tradition, okay? The oral tradition or um, Talmud spread very widely uh, during Babylonian captivity and, and even into, uh, you know, the time they, they returned. And most um, Pharisees, they believed in this oral tradition. And they preached oral tradition instead of Moses. And that's why they did not see, they did not see Messiah coming. They rejected the uh, prophets. Okay? They rejected the prophets. They did not read Daniel. If they would have read Daniel, they would have known because Daniel was very clear. His purpose of writing Daniel 9 in the 70th week was for them to recognize Messiah and to finish the time of the Jews. Finish it once and for all. Because you know what? After Messiah came, there was nothing left God promised to any of the Hebrews. He only promised Messiah to Abraham. Okay? And his seed that is coming, Messiah. And when he came, that was fulfilled. Okay? The whole promise that he made to Abraham was fulfilled. And he did not need now the Hebrews anymore. They already were divorced long time before Messiah came on this scene. Now, of course, we know that God even calls to the lost sheep of Israel. He wants them to find Messiah. He has not rejected them, but he definitely uh, divorced them. He definitely divorced them. Okay, so now what can they do? They can only accept Messiah. But now let's go to Daniel 9. And Daniel 9, and we're going to go to the 70th week. And that is in verse starts in 24. 70 weeks are decreed for your people and your holy city to finish transgression. Okay. To put an end to sin, to atone for wickedness, and to bring in everlasting righteousness. That has been fulfilled in Jesus, in Messiah. That is why everybody was wait. I mean, that's who everybody was waiting for. Everybody, if you um, listen to the Gospels and know how many people, when he went into the temple, there were two people um, um, uh, serving there. One was a man, one was a woman. And I don't remember, and I, I don't have it in front of me, but both of them were waiting for Messiah. Okay, both of them. The, uh, the three wise men were waiting for Messiah. There were many people waiting for Messiah. Um, Zechariah and Elizabeth were waiting for Messiah. There were many people waiting for Messiah during that time. Why? People who, who read Daniel knew exactly when Messiah would come. That's why during Jesus' time, there were many who came and claimed to be Messiah. Many. Jesus wasn't the only one. After Jesus' death, there were plenty more who came and claimed they were Messiah. And they misled a lot of people. But nevertheless, here is an account of um, Daniel saying, or God saying, Daniel, I give your people one more chance to repent. Okay? One more chance to repent. Please don't, don't mess it up this time. That's what he told them. Don't mess it up this time. Okay, so that's what he says. To seal up vision and prophecy and to anoint the most 
holy place. Okay, people are asking, what is the most holy place? Well, I would think the most holy place, of course, is heaven. Heaven, God, Messiah is the most holy place. The holy, yeah, it's a being, but that's the most holy place. Okay, so this is all, this is all fulfilled. We don't even have to go into the rest of it. It is obvious that this fulfilled the time of the Jews. There is no more need for the Jews to do anything. What was their job? What was the job of the Jews? To proclaim the gospel, people. Okay? To proclaim the gospel. And to show forth the light. To point to the light. So why in the world, after the Gentiles are taken in and the wrath of God starts, and there's not going to be any more brides of, the, of Christ being added to the church, okay? You understand that? After the rapture, it is it. No more people will be bride of Christ. And I hope people understand that. So why in the world, after the rapture, would the Jews get some more time? To point to what? The Bible is still there. The Old and New Testament is still there. Okay? People still have the witness of the Old and the New Testament. Why the Jews? Yes, the Jews can witness. Okay? But there is no more time for the Jews to witness. They lost it. They lost it. Yes, they can witness right now, but they are part of the Gentiles as well. Okay? The same thing with this short period of time, the wrath of God. Yes, they can witness to the world. But again, what are they witnessing with? The, no, the New and the Old Testament, not just the Old so this time of the Jews, um, of the Hebrews, came to an end with the 70 weeks. It came to an end. Jesus fulfilled everything. People, it is not about the Jews. It is not about the Hebrews. Okay? People seem to be just focused on that. Like it's all about the Jews or all about the Hebrews. It is not. It is only about Messiah all the time, all the time. We only have a privilege to proclaim the gospel, to point to Messiah. That is our privilege, okay? It is not because we're better, not because we're special. No, we have a privilege to do it. It should be our honor to be a witness for our Lord and for Messiah. And that's all that is all about. So, yes, the 70 weeks are over. Why? Because the time of the Jews is over. Because the time of the Hebrews is over. Okay? Because Messiah came. Messiah came. There is nothing else to do. Right now, all we have to do is accept Messiah and become part of his bride. So the, 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 the fullness of, the, of Israel would come, uh, come in. Okay? So all of Israel can be saved. All of Israel means all believers. Every person that believes in Messiah. Because Israel was the father of believing in Messiah. Okay? That is the bottom line. It's not about biology, not about, um, you know, genealogy or um, uh, 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 I, I call it biology. It has nothing to do with your genes. Okay? Nobody can really 100% prove that they are Jews or not Jews uh, today. Uh, you know what? Stop pointing that kind of stuff out. It is 
impossible to, to understand things if you constantly are distracted. I'm coming to an end. Read these things again. Um, Daniel 9, and especially, you know, Isaiah and Jeremiah, uh, who clearly say that Jesus, I mean, um, God divorced all of the Hebrews. And the only way they can come back to him right now is through accepting Messiah. See, what does he say? If the husband dies, the woman is free again to have another man. Well, Jesus died. Jesus died, but he also rose again. So the only thing they can do is accept the Messiah to be connected to God again. They cannot be connected to God in any other way. But let the Holy Spirit guide you. Always.